Do you want to learn how to retire rich in just three years? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about the difference between scarcity thinking and abundance thinking and how that abundance thinking will propel you to that wealthy retirement that you so desire in just three years. Hi friends, I help seven and eight figure investors play offense and play a little bit of defense in order to start to achieve the lifestyle and the dreams that they want to achieve. So watch here and we're going to talk about abundance and scarcity thinking. Listen, one of my favorite quote, quotes is this, if you want to live an extraordinary life, you cannot continue to make ordinary choices. And that's really so true. It's so true because most of us just think if we do uh, the same thing that we've always done, we're going to get the same results. Now I have another quote, and it's always, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And we don't want to get what we've always gotten unless it's awesome. And if it is, you're probably not watching this video. We always want a little bit more. So if you're one of my high net worth clients, you probably want to take your seven figures and turn it into eight figures or your eight figures and turn it into nine. Whatever it is, you have to change your level of thinking. You know, there's a quote, and I think it was Einstein who said, you know, the problem that got you here is because the same of a certain level of thinking and that same level of thinking will not be the solution to your problem. So you have to change your level of thinking. So there's two kinds of thinking that are prevalent out there and scarcity is the most prevalent and abundance is the other one. And so we're programmed because negative uh, information, negative news gets us excited and makes us interested. And so we're programmed by those negative factors, the news, uh, negative things that happen, an accident, the drama. Well, the brain likes to go where it's interested and negative negativity and scarcity is where it's interested because there's drama associated, there's emotion. But if you can switch that switch in your brain and you can switch to abundant thinking, there's emotion that you can tap into there. Now, listen, I want you to be able to build a bridge between your scarcity and your abundance because abundance is a certain level of thinking that we want to get to and scarcity is that we want to move away from. That's a moving away from value. And so we want to get out of scarcity. But you know what? Let's not underestimate the power of using scarcity as leverage for us to build the bridge to get over to abundance. So I want you to continue to say, you know what? I respect the scarcity that I have and I'm going to use it as leverage to get to my next level of thinking. And I, I talk about playing two levels of defense. You know, if you're playing football, there's that prevent defense, and then there's the regular defense that you always pay. In this video, I'm going to talk about playing regular defense. And that regular defense is what I call defense one. And defense one really stems from scarcity. And you talk about taxes, right? You've got to build better tax strategies. And I have other videos on taxes, but you have to learn uh, how, to, how to reduce those taxes. The biggest expense you'll ever pay in your entire life is to the tax man. And so you've got to figure out a way to reduce that because you've got this big bucket and the bucket on the top is, is your wages and your earnings and your investments and your income pouring in the top. But if you've got big holes on the bottom, you've got to plug them or you've got to reduce the size. Otherwise, the money just goes in and goes out. You know, everyone who's watching this video is a millionaire. Everyone who's watching this video is probably a multimillionaire because if you take how many years that you've worked time the salary that you've received, it's probably well over a million. And so it's probably more like two or three or 10 or 20. And so you're a millionaire. How much do you have left to show for that? That's the first question. And so you have to be able to start playing defense. What are the tax implications of certain decisions? How do I reduce those taxes so that I can add to my offense and, and, and quit playing so much defense? Defense is important as we're going to continue to talk about. The second part is you've got to eliminate bad debt. You know, there's good debt and bad debt. Good debt is, uh, is money that you borrow to buy things that make you more money. And if you have the amount of money exceeding the amount that you're paying for that debt service, well, you've got a successful debt investment. But if you're buying things that are depreciating in value or things that are not making you an income or things that are going backwards on your net worth statement, then it's bad debt. So you want to get away from bad debt, consumer debt, high income payment debt, you know, debt on stupid things, which is my next one. You've got to stop the stupid spending, especially if you're using consumer debt to, to do that stupid spending, right? So you've got to 
You got to stop buying things that you don't need. If you got things hanging in your closet, use them instead of buying new things. Um, use them as much as possible. It doesn't mean you need to live in scarcity all the time. It just means that when you're going to buy something, you need to say, am I really going to need this? Do I really have to have this right now or can I wait? You know, the great Warren Buffett, one of the, the best investors of all time, basically said this, every dollar that I get to save now is a dollar that multiplies multiple times over the next few years so that I can look back and I can buy anything that I want. He's one of the richest people in the entire world using that philosophy. And so we first have to play defense, but we want to build a bridge over to abundance. We don't want to be stuck in scarcity. You're not going to save your way to wealth. You're not going to cut taxes to get to wealth. You've got to play some offense too. And you've got to build that whole team. And so offense is an important part, probably the most important part of the team once you get your defense straightened out so that it's just continued to prevent backsliding. In abundance, we want to play offense. And so the way we do it is we, first of all, start to think about everything having to be investing for cash flow. If you're going to invest in something, don't buy a piece of vacant real estate you're going to sit on for 10 years. Uh, don't buy things that are not going to make you money. Gold and silver fall into that category. They don't make you money as income. They're not cash flowing. So you need to know that. Buy things that are going to be cash flowing, cash flowing positive. Real estate's a great example for that. Stock market systems are a great example of that. There's lots of different things you do, lots of side hustle, things like that. You want to invest that eventually you get your passive income going. And now I call financial freedom the level at which your passive income exceeds your spending. And so if you've got your spending to a reasonable level, then if you can get your passive income up such that you can be asleep and still make money, then you don't have to go to your job anymore, right? You can use that time either to create a new level of income or to enjoy your life. Successful people, they don't consider themselves successful because they have a lot of money. They consider themselves successful because they have a lot of time. We'll talk about that, about that in a second. The next is invest in yourself. This is a critical thing. A lot of times we get out of college, get out of high school, get out of grade school, whatever it is, and we quit learning. We quit investing in ourselves. We just go to our work, then we come home and we binge on Netflix for six or seven hours. We don't do anything with that time. And we don't learn, we don't create, we don't do things that are actually investments in ourselves so that those investments pay off at a later time. You have to do that if you wanna be successful. And then you also wanna invest in your business. And if you don't have a business, your business is to be really great in the business that you're already at, such that you can increase your potential there. Or you could start a side hustle, or if you are in your business, you want to invest more in that if you believe in yourself, and you should, and you want to scale that business so that it's it's creating abundance, throwing off passive income eventually. You can sell it or you can um, you know leverage it out, have somebody else run it. We'll talk about that in a second as well. We want to graduate now to using leverage. Using leverage is a critical thing that all successful people do. And the three components of leverage that are really important that I like to talk about is using other people's money. Good debt is a source of that. Other people's money to buy a, an investment that's going to make you money, that's a good use of money. So using somebody else's money to get leverage, you can buy more of something that's going to make you more money. So I want you to start thinking about things in, that, in those terms. Other people's time. So this is, let's say you run a restaurant. Well, if you are doing the cooking and the cleaning and the waiting on the tables and the cashiering, well, you, it's really hard to run a great big restaurant. But if you can start to leverage other people's time, you got to cook, you got a cashier, you've got a bus person, you've got a waiter, waitress, you got a manager. Now, pretty soon, other people are using their time. You have to pay them for that. But that's leverage. Now you can serve a lot more people with that infrastructure. So think about things using leverage because that's a really key component to being truly successful. And then other people's network. If, if somebody has a network, a platform that you can utilize so that you don't have to recreate that network or platform, that's, a, that's an accelerant to your success. So use leverage to accelerate graduating from that scarcity to abundance thinking because that's what really wealthy people do. I want you to realize that there are six steps to turn a million dollars into 5 million in just three years. And that's probably why you tuned into this video. And listen, you can add a zero or subtract a zero. If you only got $100,000 and you want to turn it into $500,000 in three years, this is a formula for doing that. There's a lot more to it, but I want you to at least know the steps to get there. And so maybe it's 10 million to go to 50 million, whatever it is, just add a zero. So don't be daunted by the million dollar number and don't be ashamed about the million dollar number. It's just a number, right? Whatever it is, you can 5X your, your, your money in three years. 
So, but the first thing that we have to do is we have to start thinking for ourselves. You have to get educated. And what that means is that you have to stop buying into the propaganda, the low hanging fruit. Remember your brain is lazy. And so it's just going to go to whatever is easy. So if you flip on the TV and they tell you that six to 20% in, in an investment is pretty good. And you know, that's going to get you rich. If you just save long enough and use the power of compounding, blah, 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 all the other programming that you get, well, you're probably shutting yourself off to the other possibilities out there. I'm here to tell you that 6 to 20% a year will not get you rich. It will not get you rich, especially if you want to do it in any period of time where you can retire and enjoy your life rather than having to work till you're 65 or 70 years old before you can start to enjoy your life when you're not as healthy as you might have been, you know, maybe now. You've got to figure out what the uh, wealthy are doing. And that's part of getting educated. You got to think for yourself and get educated. So let me give you an example. In Wall, on Wall Street, they tell you something is safe and they, or they'll tell you something is risky. And the definitions are probably exactly wrong. So a safe investment, they'll tell you, if you put your money into treasury bills, treasury bonds, whatever, paying two or 3%, well, that's safe because you'll get your money back. What they don't tell you is that inflation's running three or four or five percent or even more coming soon. And you have to pay taxes on that income. And so you're going backwards. So you're guaranteeing a loss, right? You might make two percent in income, but you get three percent hit with it with inflation, and that's before taxes. So after taxes, you end up losing two or three percent of your investment. That's a guaranteed loss. That doesn't sound so safe to me. Or on the other side, they tell you, you know, don't invest in covered calls. Don't invest in, in options, risky option strategies. Don't invest in these risky things. You want to put your money into a safe, diversified portfolio of mutual funds and get 6 to 10% a year. And the stock market has gotten about 8 or 9% a year. And the real estate market's gotten about 7 or 8% a year. And these are all safe things. But I can tell you, they're probably among the most unsafe things if you're talking about low returns because you're missing out on some of the high return things. So I help my clients get 1% a week. Okay, That's about the average that my clients are getting. Some people get more. Some people are happy with their 1% a week, but certainly we're getting 2% a month. right? If you look at 2% a month, that's about 24% a year if you don't compound it. And so 24% a year, most people are thinking, wow, because of Wall Street propaganda, you must be taking a lot of risk to get 24% on average. Let me tell you, I'm using some of the most conservative, safe strategies out there that create income, but we're getting 1% a week, guys. And so if you know what you don't know now that you can get 1% a week, it makes the 6% a year look really small. And so you've got to think for yourself. You've got to get educated. So that's step number one. Step number two is to play defense. And we talked a little bit about this, but you've got to stop the bleeding. If things are costing you a lot more money than they need to, you've got to play some defense. Now, I don't want, to, I don't want you to focus on scarcity. I don't want you to hole up in a small rented apartment in a bad part of town just so you can save you know, 100 bucks a month on rent. The idea is that you just stop spending money on stupid things. And so you, you just start to play a little bit more defense. You get your life in order where you're happy living the way you live because that's going to enable so much more abundant thinking. And then you're not spending, you're not wasting money on those holes at the bottom of that bucket. So that's step number two. Number three, you want to increase your revenues and you want to increase your potential. So if you're working at a job or if you have your own business, you want to increase your revenues and you want to increase that potential. So increasing a potential might mean that you go out and ask for a raise or you might work on a skill set to be able to be paid more or you negotiate something with your boss, get some stock options, or get paid as a, a consultant instead of as an employee so they don't take out so many taxes. Start thinking for yourself in that realm, and you'll have to increase your revenues, and you'll have to increase your potential in step number three. Step number four is I want you to surround yourself with an empowering tribe. Successful people know that their tribe attracts their vibe, and their vibe vice versa, attracts their tribe. And so they're always surrounding themselves with people that can help them become more, to do more, to get more, to be better. And that's what you want to do. If you have people that are pulling you down, those are anchors that are preventing you from soaring. You need to cut the cord, cut the chain, get rid of those people in your life, or at least minimize their effect in your life because they're not helping you. You need to surround yourself with an empowering tribe. The fifth thing, you want to shift to positive possibility thinking. 
positive thinking, abundant thinking. These are all important ways to think. So I want you to shift to a positive possibility abundance thinking methodology. Let me tell you what this is going to do. It's going to attract things in your life that you didn't even think were possible. You didn't even think that we're in the realm of what you could do. And all of a sudden, there they are. And so that's because you're shifting to possibility thinking. Possibility thinking attracts things to you. Impossibility thinking, negative thinking, scarcity thinking repels thing from, things from you, repels opportunities. What's the difference between wealthy people and unsuccessful people? Wealthy people attract opportunities and they get to decide, hmm, I'm going to invest in that one. I'm not going to invest in that one. I'm going to invest in that one. Other people never even see those opportunities. Did you invest in Uber? Was that a possibility for you? Well, probably because you didn't have that as a possibility th thought that it would even come to you to be able to invest in something like a unicorn company like Uber or Lyft or Airbnb. And so those things are available to you, but you've got to think into them. You've got to create them in, the, in your future. This is a really critical one, guys. This is probably the most important one. There is value that you can add to the world. I know it. I believe that everybody's a genius at something. And so you've just got to figure out what your genius is. And if you already know what it is or you're close to knowing what it is, then you've got to bottle it up and figure out a way to teach it to us or to share it with us so that you can scale it, you can leverage it, you can let more people know about it. Because the more people know about the value that you can give to the world, the more the world changes, the more the world gets better. And when the world gets better, you actually get paid more. You get paid for that value. You know, capitalism is based on being able to provide the most value to the most people. And that's why people like Jeff Bezos, who is the richest guy in the world right now, and Elon Musk, number two, they're going back and forth between number one and number two. They're providing massive value to the world. Think about a world without Amazon. It's a different world. But he provided so much value than he started with by providing books online, right? Now it's all kinds of groceries delivered and they're going to space and all kinds of things. Adding massive value to the world creates massive value in your paycheck. It creates massive value in your net worth. So those are the six steps to turn $1 million to $5 million. Now, let me just do the math for you. If you take a $1 million and you invest it at 1% a week, okay, in three years, you'll have $5 million. But you could turn your $1 million to $5 million by realizing that you can get 1%. That also is ap applicable to the way you think. If you just change your thinking 1% a week, you'll 5x the way you are in your thinking in three years. Imagine that. Imagine being five times the person that you are in your thinking, in your abundance, in your relationships, in your health, just by changing 1% a week. That's power. That's power. So I hope the six steps helps you to right your ship to turn it in the right direction, and to create a million dollars into five million in just three years, or to create the wealth that you desire, the wealth of your dreams in that shorter period of time. How can we help you? Five ways. First, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell below to make sure you get our new video the minute it comes out. Second, get a copy of my book, Hacking Money, and you'll learn a system for creating wealth through passive income so that you can build the lifestyle of your dreams. Click where it says book below. Third, if you wanna hit the ground running or if you wanna learn how to invest from someone with over 44 years of investing success, click the products and programs link below. Fourth, if you want to accelerate your path to increase your wealth, consider joining one of my ecosystems. I have mentorships and mastermind programs for learning that are practically guaranteed to make you a successful investor. Or if you want to travel the world and learn from me and other multimillionaires on the path to greatness, you should consider joining my elite mastermind group. Fifth, if you want some help right now because you have a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to create massive passive income, or you want to accelerate your results in your investments, or maybe you just want personalized mentorship to build the lifestyle of your dreams, we can help. Maybe you're a multimillionaire who just wants someone else to handle some of your investing decisions and you want to invest in one of my funds. Whatever it is for you, click on the link below where it says become a client. All those links are below. You create your world, nobody else. And remember, never give up your power in your health, your wealth, or your time.